Hi guys, today's March 14th. I come on here, I am a hot mess as you guys see. I have had one heck of a day. Um, and it, ju it just keeps getting busier and busier and busier. So last night I did a live and I did not know it buffed as bad as it did. I apologize, so I removed it. I want to recap only a lot shorter because I have a lot I got to do and I've got to get this message out. So last night I was led um, about this month, so on and so forth. And I want to make sure that everybody is on the same page as what's going on. There we go. All right. Boop, boop, boop. So if everybody went to the U.S. debt clock, then I want you to go to the secret window, and it leads you straight to X. But underneath it, you're going to see this symbol. It says, The Great Escape. Debt to Wealth. And on the left, where it says debt, has a big old X on the Federal Reserve, debtor's prison, debt-based flat currency. On the right, it says wealth with <gasps> fireworks, asset-based, debt-free, the new money revolution. If this don't tell you about the new world order, I don't know what it is. Um, because what's going to happen, they're talking about April. April 1st, around that timing. Like I said, don't quote me on that. I've heard so many times about the banking system crashing, and it hasn't. Um, I know a lot of people believe we have a lot of time left. No, we don't. Um, the bank, they're talking about, by this eclipse, people need to have stuff stocked up. People, schools are closing down. I mean, it's a humongous deal. They're talking about the dangers of this eclipse. And then they had this on the debt clock. Okay. Um, I believe, with all of my heart, uh, that this is going to reset the economy, the money. That is what they're doing digital currency for. Digital currency will not be around forever. It is a temporary um, m money holding that is going to be out, I believe, for about a year, year and a half, and then it's going to be forced, uh, which is going to turn into the chip or, quote, unquote, the mark. All right, so here I go. All the animals in Africa have started moving, okay, as in the times of Noah. It is, at the times of Noah, what happened is God called all the animals, okay, so that Noah could load them onto the ark seven days before the rains came. They just, two by two by two. And there's, what was it, two clean and two unclean of every kind, Okay, it didn't say there was only two, a male and a female, they were loaded. No, it said two of clean, two of unclean, of each kind. Okay, all right, so there was that. They go into the ark, sealed for seven days, the rains came. Okay, the reason this is huge, okay, I'm going to recap on this, and then I'm going to fast forward. We have 24th, or well, the, the 8th. The barley was found of beef, okay? The spotting of the new moon, okay? Um, I believe was that day or was the 10th? No, it was the 11th. That began the head of the new year. A lot of people are wondering, how was that possible? I am actually going to do a study on that, why it is possible about the barley beginning the new month, new year, why that is important, how that is significant. Not in this video, though. All right, so we have the barley that's been, okay, and then we have, what, Purim, the 23rd and 24th, Passover, the 24th, the 25th, lunar eclipse, and then we have the sacrifice of the red heifers, okay, at the end of the month, in between the 29th and the 30th, 31st, around that area, the ending of Passover, and then seven days later, or 
So we have this eclipse. All right, so me, 100% what God showed me. I had the Holy Spirit so strong on me yesterday. I don't have it right this second, but that's okay. Doesn't mean I don't have him. Um, this red heifer sacrifice is it is the abomination that makes desolate. Why do I say that? I'm going to show you why in the Bible. This is in the Strong's. You have to remember that the Bible was written in Hebrew, translated to English. Okay? Our words do not mean the same thing as they do in Hebrew. That is why there is a Strong's concordance in Hebrew and in Greek. All right. So, and after three score and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And listen to this. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And then there's a semicolon. The people of the prince. The prince is not here just yet. It is the people that's going to destroy it, right? Which we've already seen the wars and everything else going on over there. Okay, and the end therefore thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. What does that mean? There's going to be cities that are laid desolate. They're going to be destroyed. Damascus, so on. Psalms 83, war, so on and so forth. Um, we've got Egypt, all, all these other cities. Anyways, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The, he's confirming something that's already been out. Okay. So the confirmation of something is is a continuation of something that's already been into the market. This is not a new agreement. This is not the peace agreement that they quote unquote have between Israel and Palestine. We are not waiting on that and then the tribulation to begin. That is not how this is going to play out. And this is saying, and he shall confirm the covenant with many. So we have the people of the prince that's coming. The people are doing the red sacrifice to usher in their Messiah, their Antichrist. Now, people are saying, well, there has to be a third temple built. Okay. But I want you to understand something. So, okay, so I'm going to continue. Uh, and he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation that is determined to be poured out upon it desolate. But this says, but in the midst of the week, he shall cause a sacrifice to cease. Okay, we've already, this sacrifice they have is going to usher in the Antichrist. They know who he is. Okay, the Antichrist does not stand up, listen to me, and this is biblical, the Antichrist does not stand up in this holy spot on the Mount of Olives, like it's saying with the sacrifice and where it's, where it's headed. Okay. To usher in the antichrist for someone they do not know for somebody who is not going to reveal himself at that timing. Okay. So people say, well, th at the revealing is when he gets his mark. The antichrist has already been here, guys. The antichrist gets 42 Months, 1260 days to rule, period. He does not get seven years, period, at all. He doesn't get three and a half years of charm and three and a half years of that. That's not biblical. He is already here. He is in man form. The Jews are waiting on them, him, to come in. So this is the overspreading of the abomination of desolate. Now, Matthew 24 is for the Jews. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this isn't speaking to us. This is directly a message to the Jews. This is the only one of the end times out of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that is talking, or this talks to the Jews. Uh, Luke uh, talks to us. Mark talks to the Jews. All right. So here we go. And it says, um, verse 13, but he who endures till the end shall be saved. 
14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Okay. 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. All right. They're talking about this quote unquote temple that's going to be built by November. God says, My temple is not built with human hands. He is already, already right here, standing on the, the, the holy place. Okay. Now, when the, the two witnesses come on, they're already, they've already been saying the two witnesses will come on. When that gets built, that deals with the two witnesses and the 144,000 coming on to scene. Okay. Um, and this is, this is also another humongous study because this, this gets a lot of riffraff. Okay. And then it says, then let those who are in J Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes and so on and so forth. But woe to those who are pregnant and nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the a Sabbath. The winter is already passed. I already said that. Song of Solomon. Okay. Their winter. Okay. When the Antichrist comes after them. I'm reading you Revelation chapter 12. Okay, so we have, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, we've already been seeing that. Okay, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them down to earth. I believe April 8th is that. 100%. I believe this is the, the true fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign, this part. Now, you have the dragon that's standing before the woman. You have to understand the dragon in heaven, whatever, is going to get cast down to the woman, but their child's already caught up. So he gets angry. Okay? Before he does, he starts persecution, persecuting the Jews, but he can't get to them. Why? Because God told them to flee. So he flees. Okay? The Jews flee, and the, there's a massive earthquake. Okay? That swallows it up. The flood that comes after them, which I believe is the flood is the armies that's coming after them. But God, there's a massive earthquake that, that is going to separate the Antichrist. This is the exact same 1260 days that they are going to be protected from Satan at the revealing. Okay, so what happens, he gets mad. So he turns around on the remnant, the rest of the people. Okay, the rest of the people that got left behind. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, so there is that. Um, and so uh, you can read Luke. It says the same thing. You can read uh, Mark 13. Says the same thing. That the abomination of desolation is the same time. And then it says, as the fig tree leaves go to fall. It's a massive shaking. I believe, me, I believe that we are going to leave um, around before, um, in between now and the eclipse. I more so believe we are leaving this month. I believe we are going to be leaving at the beginning of Passover. I believe that. Now, I'm not holding my breath on a date because I don't know the day or hour. We are definitely in the timing and the season. And it is 100% judgment that is coming from this eclipse. This isn't just another event. This is, okay, here we go. Exodus 4. Have to read you this. Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. Okay, we're talking about the plagues of Egypt, which also coincide with the, the marking, the X over the United States. Because what it goes through, rapture, Indiana, so on and so forth, all these, Jonah, Nineveh, so on and so forth. Okay, verse 4, 8. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, 
nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. God, in August 21st, 2017, solar eclipse, straight over the United States, from the West Coast down to the Carolinas. This time, it's going the opposite way to make the X, right? And what happens, it's going to make the letter, the Aleph. Okay, the letter A, the first letter alphabet. And so X marks the spot. And God says, if you're not going to heed my first sign, I'm going to give you a sign. No sign shall be given except the sign of Jonah. You understand? So, and the end is from the beginning. And so therefore when... um you know, we have the exodus that's happening, or the great escape. We have the blood over the doorpost that, that the plagues, someone was telling me that they were shown that the plagues are being shown backwards. Okay. Um, so I don't know, but I know that the death angel comes and he's going to be killing. And I believe that that is because that triggers a release. Okay. And to go, uh, Moses and had, had the, the people go and they they crossed over okay and Passover timing that is what that is for the representation of the Jews being set free and so now also even more in depth um the devil's comet it has a tail not only a tail it has horns when does it pass by? When is it visible? April 8th. My husband's birthday. And I keep saying that. His name means Yahweh lifts up. To be lifted. Or lift up. Um, and then it says it will have its closest approach on April 21st. That is in, like what, the middle of the month. That is my brother-in-law's birthday. And his name, Jeffrey, means pledge of pay... Uh, Pledge of Peace, dis, District, and Traveler. So, this is also very biblical of a name um, and how it is a 13 days later, almost two weeks later. Um, so, God is giving little signs of what's happening and triggering of the Antichrist coming onto scene. Okay, so we have Passover, and then we are going to have, 50 days later, Pentecost. And so we're right here in this bubble and this timing. we got the fig trees that God talks about in Song of Solomon, in Matthew, Mark, Luke. Um, okay, and then I just showed you the Devil's Comet, the Exodus, all of it's here. This is complete judgment, and I 100%. 100% believe that this is the abomination that makes desolate. All right. And Passover, they're doing a sacrifice that God is not going to be pleased with. And this April 8th is the latter sign that they are going to believe. Judgment's going to be poured out right then and there. Absolutely, I do believe that. Uh, and the reason I don't believe that the rapture happens that day is because it's going to be too obvious. It's on a day that we know it very well could be that day. I'm not saying it's not. Um, but there is a rapture. And the rapture and second coming are two different things. If you do not believe in the rapture, keep your comments to yourself off my post, please. Because I do. Okay? Pre, mid, or post. It does not matter. We get a crown for watching and waiting. We get a crown for waiting on the rapture. Okay. And everyone is weary. And I, I have never in my life heard so many people in sync of March. It is here. You cannot debunk these signs. It is in your face. And if you can't see it now, oh, you, you will be, you will be shaking in your little space boots once once April 8th happens, once the rapture happens, once the dead in Christ happens, you know what I'm saying? The, there's just very bad things that's happening. And on top of that, I am going to talk about this because I, I need to. Fort Campbell 
uh, Tennessee has ginormous planes that keep loading and taking off, loading and taking off. Okay? Putin makes another nuclear threat. Russia responds to China's nuclear weapons. Okay, China, Russia, Iran join forces for war games amid U.S. Um, healthy clashes. And what happens? We also have Poland current deployment of NATO battleships in the port of, I can't even pronounce it, G-D-Y-N-I-A, which is close to the Russian uh, Kaliningrad enclave. French Frigate FS uh, Aquitaine D650 arrived today as previously the Italian Frigate F595 Luigi Rizzo. And here's some other stuff. Um, we also have bombers which are out there flying NATO in Russia. NATO is supposed to be our ally. They're going to be our enemy. They are, this, this America is getting ready to go nuclear. I'm, I'm just telling you that now. It has to. And EMP is getting ready to happen. Earthquakes getting ready to happen. God is about to shake. He's about to put his fist down. Just like Dana Cornerstone said. Just like Ron has said. It's getting ready to happen. My kids actually had a dream of that several years ago about the hand of God coming down. Um, and I also dreamt um, of... Russia, NATO, China, all coming against the United States and we getting bombed in several areas around the lunar eclipse, around the solar eclipse. So I'm not saying that's going to happen. Hey! Hey! Apologize about that. Uh, my brother-in-law scared me. He turned the light off. All right. So anyway, so five passenger airplanes reached 800 miles per hour after strong winds pushed the planes to inside speeds. One plane was a Virgin Atlantic flight from Washington to London. The plane hit 802 miles an hour, which is 40% faster than a typical cruising speed. This is talking about the, the pole shift. Our winds have been ridiculous. You should have seen my sunset tonight. I will actually attach it to this video. All right, and um, it, it's it's insane. They have been doing shorter and shorter flights as well. I mean, it, the it's just insane. And then breaking news is Florida border agents in Miami have been placed on high alert. They're told to prepare for a wave of migration from Haiti following the takeover of the country by bloodthirsty gangs. New York Post reports. Okay. And now Biden wants to try and stop it. Yeah, okay. Um, he's the one that did this. Our country is going down the toilet. It is done. There's no coming back from this. And if you truly believe that Trump is going to save you or that we're going to have another president, you're, you're massively deceived. Because God is not going to allow this to continue. He's angry. And he's done. Judgment is here we're done like after it's just going to keep speeding up warp speed faster faster and faster operation warp speed what trump did oh guys i don't know what else to tell you to wake y'all up i mean we're here every sign is lined up the time of noah we have jonah we have the celestial signs. We have the menorah up in the sky. We have the devil's comet. We have the sacrifice of the red heifers. We have Passover. We have the barley. We have Pentecost coming up. We have the eclipse. And we have a lunar eclipse. Uh, the sun and moon shall be darkened and will not give its light. Okay. So on and so forth. And this is it. You're not going to be able to save yourselves. Okay? Only God's going to be able to save you. And we're on crunch time. Ask Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because you are not promised tomorrow. At all. I'll see you guys there in the air. God bless.
All right, guys, I am getting a little bit of a heads up warning of what we can expect this week. It looks like Russia and Ukraine, the escalation of conflict is going to happen within the next 48 to 72 hours. But here's what's happening for the United States of America. There's going to be a general understanding by the banking structure, by the Federal Reserve, and by the U.S. government that we are officially in what they are calling a people's depression. Now, that means it's not really affecting the banks like you would think, even though we are seeing some close down, it's not really affecting the corporations because their profits are rising higher than ever. <clears throat> Instead, this people's depression is affecting me and you. It's making it harder for us to hold on to our goods. The uh, ability for us to purchase new goods is almost non-existent. Housing market is about to completely blow the bottom out. There are people out there with 70 plus Airbnbs in their own name that cannot afford to keep them. Nobody is renting them. This is a crisis. Now, as soon as the people catch on to this, I'm sure that you're starting to see in your local area that there are some reverberations, more for sale signs, more for lease signs. They're staying up longer. The businesses are having more uh, you know, vacancies and opening spots. People can't hold on to positions. This is part of a people's depression. Now, as this becomes realized in the general population, you're going to see a waterfall event, a, a snowball effect. When this happens, everything is off the rails. You can't expect anything to be as it was. Now, we do have mortgage delinquencies rising up to 136% in different parts of the country. Kim Jong-un just stepped up his war preparations. The North Korean leader just moved his troops into a war readiness or a combat readiness position. This news is after the military drills by the U.S. and South Korea post, uh, posted twice the number of troops to North Korea's south. Kim Jong-un said our army speaking of the North Korean army, must steadily intensify war drills that are aimed at rapidly improving combat capabilities that are perfect for war preparedness. Now, let me tell you, Russia is going to fuel Kim Jong-un and the North Korean war against South Korea and the United States of America. If they haven't already given the weapons of massive amounts of destruction to North Korea, I would be very, very surprised. What I truly expect to happen is when we see the catalyst to the next big one, whether it's a chemical weapon, a biological weapon, or a nuclear device exploding, it's going to be through a proxy government. We're going to see Russia, we're going to see China, we're going to see Iran move it through a lesser known country. And that explains why uh, Lukashenko of Belarus just recently took the keys to Russia's nuclear weapons. Now we do have a bit of breaking information that just came out in the last couple of days that Google AI engineer that was indicted for selling AI secrets to China, well, wink, wink, China, you just got yourself some very uh, uh, awoken, I guess is the best term, uh, you know, ideologies driven into your AI system. Now he was indicted for stealing crucial AI trade secrets in order to benefit Chinese companies. Now they say that these stolen secrets pertain to Google's supercomputing infrastructure, and it is going to be a, a move by China and by the West to completely take over everything that you know. Every aspect of your life will be taken over in some way by artificial intelligence. Fidelity, in, Fidelity International cutting 10% of their workforce. Whirlpool, another round of layoffs taking place. Paramount Group surrendering multiple buildings after defaulting on their loans. They're going to be letting go an undisclosed number of positions. The retail company Bath Body, uh, The Body Shop ceased operations in the USA and their website. They have 65 locations. The Canadian division filed for insolvency. Liquidations are happening everywhere. If you do have a little bit of extra cash, now might be the time to be able to pick up some good purchases.